Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today I'm going to talk to mom about three, I don't know how many, I just shouldn't have said a number, some different <laughs> seam finishes. Because knowing us, it could be three or 33. 30, whatever, you know. Or none, I if we guess. go off on our tangents. That's we, right. If you notice, we never tangent. Okay, right? compared to some other podcasts. <laughs> We are, are very we pre- are good we not at too staying bad? on topic. Oh, yes, okay. we are. I won't. Okay. I don't want to get off topic too much, but I listen to or sometimes our, 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 our customers. They can uh, do some tangents, but too. that's that's you know expected. But I've listened to probably about thirty podcasts in the past week. I got hooked. Like I go through phases right. sometimes. You know, um, hello to anyone binge listening right now. But I'm like, man, you had like two intros up in this podcast like get to the point you know and they they are advice they're about like blogging and podcasting and i'm listening for education right right right. okay well let's get straight to it first of all first of all mom yeah why do we finish seams oh we're talking about finishing seams i said did you say that (laughs) i missed it maybe someone else who's listening missed it (laughs) finishing seams and why do we finish seams well what i mean Certainly, I guess the primary reason we finish seams is because if seams ravel, they will eventually get to where the seam is made, where the two fabrics are uh-huh. put together, and then they will start to pull apart. Fall apart, yeah. Right, right. You know, your fabric's falling apart. So we, we cut fabric out, right. like uh, pattern pieces, okay, right. if you, you know, picture that. And you want to cut them out. You don't tear them out. <laughs> That's right. We cut pattern pieces. Right. And then we sew them together. Right. And depending on construction technique, Mm -hmm. that this uh, technique of uh, this topic of seam finishing happens before, after, or during construction, during that seam making. Yeah. So in the old days, Uh like when I very first in my life found out you had to finish seams. (laughs) You didn't finish the seams on your scarecrow Halloween costume? Oh, okay. Didn't even occur to me. It's not around today. I probably, I probably cut them out with like a blunt pair of, you know, round nose scissors out of my crayon box or yeah. something too we, i'm sure we didn't have fabric shears we can we need to talk about shears too okay, okay good it's on the list. write that down okay. um or cutting anyway um in those days and this would have been back in say the 60s and i assume before that i don't know when pinking shears were first came on i get somebody out there google that and tell us in the comments mm-hmm. when did pinking shears first come on the scene and that was those it was the pairs of scissors that had a you know zigzag like um chevron pattern to them when Mm -hmm. you cut Mm -hmm. okay and i hated them (laughs) i really did and so one way to finish your seams was to cut them with that and that can be called pinking, like pinking shears. Pink, and they called pink them your seams yeah, or whatever. And they called right? them pinking and yeah. pinking shears. And another way was to just stitch away from the edge of your fabric with a very, very close stitch. Okay. Okay. Um, now that would be like a one or one point five stitch, or in those days it would have been like fourteen or sixteen stitches per inch or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the other, and then another way again was to do that stitching and then pink up to that line. Okay. So, you know, and you know, this is all in hopes that your garment won't ravel uh-huh. or come undone in any way and also that you'll have a finished look. On the inside, like right. a nice looking inside of your garment. Right. Okay. Right. Um, there's always been the French seam which is an enclosed seam. Mm-hmm. So you make a seam with your wrong sides together, and then you turn it and uh, make it with your right sides so that seam is enclosed. Yeah, and I guess, you know, that's good to include. And in, that is, I mean, technically a seam finish. Right, know? and we yeah. still do that. We, oh, and, yeah. and, and that's a very common one to still do. It's also very, very um, popular to do on, like, sheer fabrics. Yeah, I have a shirt that I did that. Uh, right. I did that. I combined it with another seam finishing technique that I'm sure we'll get to. Right. So, um, um, you know, French seam, and you see a lot of French seaming in, 
work that has um, a lot of handwork with it. So you'll like a smocking garment or those heirloom garments, heirloom garments. You see a lot of the French seaming because it was all about that garment needed to be pretty every place. Mm-hmm. Now you also have to understand these garments were supposed to last for generations. Yeah. So if you were making a, an heirloom type garment, so a g- garment with a lot of lace and hand finishing and, and hand piecing, all this kind of stuff, okay? Um, you know, somebody made this wedding dress or somebody made this christening gown, and it was worn for generations. Yeah, like it was by every baby. And yeah. worn by every mm-hmm. baby in that generation. Mm-hmm. Right, and well, well taken care of. You know, you didn't play in your christening dress. Sure. Um, you know, they probably had a set of sort of rag clothes they wore every day and played in, and that's all they had. Right. But, you know, these specialty garments uh, were saved for that. Okay, so um, that was basically how I finished my seams. And I really got into, I didn't like picking. I didn't like the time it took. And I did not, um, I like just sewing the stitched edge. Okay. Now, I also always sit a zigzag machine, so I could zigzag my edge. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that worked well, and sometimes it didn't. The machines in those days would tend to tunnel sometimes the fabric. So then, you know, you'd have like this tunneling on the edge of your seam, which, of course, wasn't that pretty and didn't look right. that nice. Or, you know, you, you'd lay it down like on a piece of, of paper yeah. and do it. Well, then you had to go back and pick all the paper out. Mm-hmm. Like, so all of these things were, um, you know, sometimes I felt holding me back or a little inefficient for me. Mm-hmm. And that was sort of on everyday clothes. There's also things like what we call a Hong Kong finish. Yeah, and let's Mm -hmm. talk about some of these specialty finishes. That's sort of high-end finishing. And that is where the edge of your your seam allowance is enclosed in a bias, okay, a bias fabric. Ideally, it was a, like, lightweight silk. Mm -hmm. Again, because you don't want to add bulk. And you want it to look pretty. I'm in the process of trying to, well, I don't know. It's hanging up at the shop. Right. <laughs> I'm currently making a silk, like, boucle jacket mm-hmm. from the Magic Pattern book. And this is how I'm going to finish my seam. Well, and especially something like a boucle, mm-hmm. like that big open weave yes. nowadays. The other thing is, like, beaded fabric. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's, it's, it's nice to do this with, with a, a fabric that has something... Um, applied to it uh-huh. or somehow incorporated into it that it has a funny finish or a funny feel. And um, so you you apply the a bias to that. Now, it's a what you would call a, a one-fold bias. Single-fold bias, mm-hmm. yeah. Not yeah. a double-fold. Mm-hmm. Because, again, you're trying to stay away from bulk. Yeah, I think that mm-hmm. people – are like, why would I ever use single fold well, bias? Well, and some they... people would use tool. Uh huh. Oh, okay. And I think that's okay as long as that seam isn't up against your you. skin. Yeah, and there there are you know there are silk tools. I think they still make those. I haven't seen one in a hundred years. Mm-hmm. But uh, most of the tools now are like a polyester or a nylon, and they're kind of rough. You know, yeah. it's not something that's comfortable up against the skin at all. But you lay that bias, you know, raw edge to raw edge. You stitch. Mm-hmm. You fold it over. You stitch it's in the ditch. It's basically on the right side of the seam, mm-hmm. if you can think about this, and then fold it back. She means right side of the fabric. Right. I'm sorry. Right like, side of the fabric. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, uh-huh, yeah. I do uh-huh. mean that. Because I was like, no, it's on the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the inside of the garment. Yeah. But yes. Now, that's a, okay. Yeah. Um, and then maybe not all. There's the also a fashion detail where people will do that on the outside. Right. And you bring your seams to the outside. Mm-hmm. And then this bias is on the edges of your outside seams. Mm-hmm. And that's a look. Right. Yeah. You know, um. Uh, a lot of times on like the chenille type looking Chanel, yeah, Chanel, Chanel, yeah. excuse me, mm-hmm. Chanel type looking jackets. You'll see something like that, the boxy jacket that has the trim, and that's often been used as a fashion detail, and it's really clever looking. Right, right. It's very, I mean, very sophisticated and you can, looking. You know, you can do whatever you want, right? Well, you know, <laughs> and this is not a difficult technique. No, somewhat time consuming. Yes. The other place I have used this technique before, where I haven't even used it on the entire garment, but sometimes I've used it. On my zipper, mm-hmm. if I do not have, if I'm not lining the garment for some particular mm-hmm. reason, um, and I have chose not to do that. Sometimes, if you have multi layers in a garment, maybe you don't really want a lining also. Yeah, but you've made the so the zipper 
basically, you know, the t- tape of you the zipper the is exposed. Uh-huh. So you, you will wind up binding the tape to the seam, you know, allowance right. that is there to give a nice look. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, and then you don't have, you know, two or three layers like like they're hanging, hanging flapping right, yeah right yeah right so that and again this is usually a lightweight i say silk you know it can be a cotton or something sure. but silk silk is sort of the traditional what was used um on anything other than cotton now those cotton when i talked about those cotton um Christmas Heirloom, gowns or something gowns, like yeah. that you probably would have seen the very very lightweight lawn mm-hmm. which is a light tight woven cotton mm-hmm. so it almost has a silky feel about sure, it sure because mm-hmm. it's so fine probably similar loom yeah to the silk so wh- i want to talk about our favorite seam finish <laughs> and the one we probably use most often mm-hmm. nowadays mm-hmm. and that is using the serger, serger. okay so mm-hmm. talk to us about finishing seams with a serger okay the first thing about finishing a seam with a serger that you need to know or any time you're finishing a seam is you're trying not to add bulk. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a three-thread narrow serged edge. And really, you want to do as long of a length as you can. Mm-hmm. Now, you may not be able to do a long length. You may be stuck at 2.5 or 3, but, you know... Again, you're trying not to build up bulk inside that. So another thing you want to use is you want to use a serger weight thread, not a construction weight thread that you would use on your regular sewing machine. You use that lighter weight thread. I've also been known to use embroidery thread because mm-hmm. it's a lighter weight. Mm-hmm. And especially if I'm worried about making matching a color, uh-huh. the other thing about the embroidery thread is it's even lighter. And and oftentimes smoother right it can be smoother and lay better and Uh than uh the serger thread hopefully you're using a high quality serger thread because there are some really really just like construction threads you know not nice cheap cheaply made horrible serger threads if they're it's it's fuzzy you shouldn't be using so it. we like to use madeira Aerolock thread and we actually sell that on our site we do yeah. and it, it it is absolutely for me the best and the best bargain out there yeah you no know? it's a really good price right it's a good price and it comes in 48 colors good colors yeah. um get that mauvey pink one it works on everything uh, i think it's called you rose know it's number if it's, called, it's rose, called rose you, it works on everything red <laughs> beige, <laughs> pink. I love that color. Sometimes I get, yeah, sometimes it's one it of my favorite into colors. Like yellows, even mm-hmm. though it's a rose color. Right. So the serge seam, I I finished off some seams on a jacket, and I did it wrong. Um, and I told her about it. That's why I knew I did it wrong. I didn't and, know oh, it was wrong. The other thing that. you want to do oh, is, you, I'm yeah. sorry, you want to finish it mm-hmm. with the right side of your fabric up. Yeah. Good. Good. And yes. why like would said, and why would I tell finish. you to do that, Mallory? Well, I am. Do you know why? Because the, okay, when you're surging, right? Yeah. The lower loopers pull, the lower looper is a little bit tighter than that top looper. So it cups to the bottom side. It might not on your serger if you've got it set wrong. Right. Or if, if it's you, set if you perfectly. Have a, if you have a serger that you have to set tensions on. Yes. So, <laughs> but ideally your serge seam will tend to cup towards the bottom the looper. The, 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 the lower, lower looper. looper right. Lower looper. Sure. Lower looper. Right. So, um, I fit, let me, so listen up people. I'm going to tell you how to do wrong and then mom's going to tell you how to do it right. So don't, th- I'm, I'm telling you what I did and it's, it's not <gasps> correct. Oh, I think I remember this yeah. now. So I made this jacket and it's an un it's just a faced jacket so it's unlined okay so the lining didn't come into the come into the equation here and I was like I'm going to finish off some of these pattern pieces before I sew them together you know so that they don't ravel and I finished off my arm size and I finished off like on the front and back of the jacket okay I finished off those armholes and I also did it over like the sleeve cap like that arm size as well and she means the arm size on the sleeve yes no, yes the sleeve like cap both right. both of the them the sleeve yeah. cap yeah, those <laughs> curvy pieces. Yes, yes. So I finished those off, and then I sewed them together. And so then when they're sewn together, there's, like, two surged pieces right. sewn together right. separately. Okay? And the mom's like, what the heck's going on here? You know, And you said, first of all, that I should not have finished off those edges 
with the serger ahead of time because. Well, what? Okay, there's a couple of reasons. Yeah, yeah. Right. Number one, I'll start from number one. Those, you know, the arm size should be, if anything, stay stitched if you're worried about something raveling while you're working with it. Mm-hmm. Any curved edge should be stay stitched if you're worried about it getting out of shape or, or um, you know, raveling or, 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 you know, threads coming loose or anything like that. Okay. Because when you surge, you're mashing the fabric and you're sending it through, and you're sending it through pretty fast, right, mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. with a knitted stitch, mm-hmm. and especially if you're doing this on a woven fabric, and you're sewing on probably a bias because it's a curve, right. you can get that out of shape. Mm-hmm. So that's the number one reason you don't want to do okay. it. Okay, and then second of all, uh, so that was finishing right. it off, like why I shouldn't have finished it beforehand. And then right. second of all, after I sewed it together, we had those two, to picture those two layers of serge right. fabric, like flapping adding around. Adding bulk, adding bulk. Yes, yep. so... What I should have done was mm-hmm. not finish off the sleeve cap on the sleeve pattern. Right. Set in my sleeve. That's right. As uh, um, the pattern directs or whatever. Right. And then surge my armhole, right? Together. Together. You ch- right. One, surge those two pieces yes, together. One thing together. Right. Now, I have a quick question, uh-huh. and I think I know the answer, but I want you to tell me. On the, on the sleeve seam like the thing that goes under your arm from your wrist right. up to your armpit mm-hmm. that seam if okay. you have a one piece if it, sleeve yeah, right. a, this was just a one piece right. sleeve right i finished that off beforehand and that's fine and that's okay because that seam's going to get pressed open okay yes and i think like a general rule yeah. and remember rules are to be broken but a general rule would be it is the straighter cut pieces so you know the seam in the arm it's not really straight but Mm -hmm. or you know even a skirt you've got an a-line or a shape to it but if you think about it the side seams are usually pretty straight those you're going to finish first Mm -hmm. and i you know i cut them out and i finish them on my surgery because of course they're easier to finish flat right then i I mean it's so much it's right so much nicer to be able to finish them flat and not worry about them you know uh raveling or 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 whatever while Mm -hmm. you're doing no i mean that you do so you need to think about that yeah so you you Mm -hmm. might like go from like surgery to sewing machine or from from uh straight stitch like on your sewing machine to overcasting or Mm -hmm. yeah or zigzag well i think when you're cutting out okay so when you're when you're when you're cutting out your pattern Mm -hmm. i do a lot of head planning right you know that and there's some shortcuts that we're gonna let you guys all know in the future like there's some habits I've developed that make, that are like, make, um, what prepare you for always putting a pattern or a garment in any pattern together. It doesn't even have to be a garment. It could right. be a bag pattern yeah. or something. Um, but techniques I've learned over, over to make me successful and also save time. But so if you think about a garment, pretty much it's going to always certainly be the side seam, the back seam, the front seam, that type of thing. Hems I don't finish until uh-huh. I put the fabric together. Uh-huh. Because if I want to finish the hem with a serger, which I probably do 99% of the time, I do it in the circle. All around. You right. want to finish mm-hmm. off the, you'll you'll serge across front jacket piece, back. Right. Second, and, like right and, front, back, right front. And the other thing that I'm getting to do when uh-huh. I do that is I have my seams open and I'm stitching them yeah, down. Yeah, stitching them open. Right, right. The other, the thing about um, the finishing the seams too Sometimes you don't want to finish certain things or oh I I what when we're talking about using the serger we're not cutting anything off okay No no you're you if, get you, you might be allowance. skimming a thread off yeah. here or there but if if you've got your blade up you're only making dust you're not cutting off any seam allowance Yeah and I'll put a picture of that Delia jacket up where you can see that seam allowance you want to leave that seam allowance in there but I mean partially because what if you have to alter it after you right. put it on right. you know but also it it creates strength Well you have to have the seam allowance fabric. you have to have seam allowance to have strength in your garment Yes yes I mean most garments um, you know, if you think about a quilt, no, you only have a quarter inch. Well, you're trying to not have bulk. And then that quilt. And it's enclosed. And that quilt gets quilted. You right. Know? Yeah. And it doesn't receive stress on, mm-hmm. on its seams. A garment receives stress on right. its seams. It needs that other fabric there mm-hmm. to give it strength to allow for some pulling. And th- Think about, you know, your butt seam and you getting in and out of the car. Right. I don't care how skinny you are, you're going to put stress right, on it. Right, right. Your body moves and, and right. changes and whatnot. Right. And we are talking about woven fabrics right, right. now. 
now, you know. So um, finishing, we love to finish with the serger. And you talked about the tunneling with the zigzagging Uh on a sewing machine. Most sewing machines today, the vast majority, come with an overcasting foot And the, And you're right. And they have a little pin in them yeah. that keeps that tunneling from happening. And do look at your, I'm going to interrupt you a little bit, do look right. at your owner's manual for that overcasting foot. So just like mom said, there's a pin in your stitching area. Mm-hmm. And you need to choose an overcasting stitch, or you need to look in your owner's manual, choose an overcasting stitch, and choose the settings if you're working on a computerized machine, a lot of times it's, you know, you choose the stitch. And it tells you the foot. Correct. It right. tells you the foot. It does all that. Make sure you're choosing the correct stitch so that you don't break a needle, poke yourself in the eye. But that right. bar serves to stabilize that It keeps the stitch. Edge of the fabric. Right. It doesn't allow mm-hmm. the, the thread to bunch up the fabric. Right. It goes over that pin. And then as you move along, of course, the pin comes down. Right. But the pin is in the foot. And I don't use that a lot since I have a serger, right. but I do show people, well, I mean, I don't personally use it on my projects. I show right. people how to use it all the time because I sell sewing machines. Right. And it really, it works very nicely. The only thing is, you know how you were talking about making dust, you know? Uh-huh. If there's a little bit of a thread or a little right. something, right. you know, it's just not the clean, beautiful right. look of the serger. The thing that's, that's yeah. it. The serger makes everything clean and nice. Gorgeous. As well as... You know, there's knit fabrics okay, or so the, our yeah. bonded fabrics. Mm-hmm. We don't have to right. finish mm-hmm. or they don't require finishing in order to not ravel or whatever. I will still search them because it makes it pretty. Yeah, it makes it pretty. And but, the other seam, of, I don't maybe I don't even have to throw this in there, but kind of like a French seam is right. a flat felled seam. Um, is yeah. The, uh, in, in I've that actually heard that called. What have I heard French it called? A French flat felt seam. Fl- French flat, right? A That's French, what I've yeah. heard it called. It, right. It's similar in that is it is an enclosed mm-hmm. seam versus you know getting like overcast or right. surged or something like right. that. So just throw that in there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that you know the di- now with knit garments, mm-hmm. knit fabrics. Sometimes we use the serger just to construct the, those well, the serger, at you're, once. Well, you're using the serger as a construction, so you don't have to worry about the seams. But there have been instances where I just, maybe I am inserting a zipper and that seam is going to be open on my knit garment. Uh-huh. It's going to be open and flat, and I'm going to do part of that on my sewing machine. I'll still finish those edges yeah. so I have a pretty look. And again, it all they also will cup mm-hmm. just a little bit. You know, to my to the garment because I'm I'm sewing them. Why is it okay for knit garments to have such small seam allowance when we were talking about how important it is in woven garments? Because knit gives, mm-hmm. and it also many of it nowadays has a memory. You know, used to be that knit would stretch and not go back. Okay, <laughs> and kind of frown. <laughs> right, right. It's like blowing up a balloon that gets wrinkly. Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, uh, I remember in the '60s we used to wear stretch pants that had like stirrups that went around your your foot they were real popular for a while and the knees would bag and bag yeah, and bag and you, yeah. you know you couldn't you you had to launder them just to make the knees go back go back right so they you, did the fabric didn't have the memory it does now you find that though when they're making pants to fit such a wide range of right. sizes well nowadays. and though and those fabrics were knit but mm-hmm. they didn't have lycra in them right and lycra is the lycra um or the spandex is what gives it the memory. Right. Or elastane. Right. For all of our listeners in countries that say elastane. I'm really unpatriotic lately. I've been finding all of these. Um, I'm like fangirling all these Canadians and these British people. Oh, and stuff. yeah. And I'm, I keep ordering them like, oh, the, this person's Canadian. Like this, oh, this person's <laughs> Canadian. We have like a Canada corner in our shop. You have like a kinship <laughs> with the with, – with, with uh, these Canadian the, yeah, the English for some reason, or, I don't know. Right. They um uh, well, you know. Did anyway. you, did, <laughs> I, it's probably because you also speak the same language, almost. Well, well, um, but they're, simi- <laughs> they're all English. Yes, right, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. They're you all know, English. You speakers. might be ordering in Japanese if you could read it better. You're right, you're right. right you're right. totally correct. Right. You're totally correct. Um, I know there for a while it seemed like I was getting a lot of things from Australia. Yeah, too. well, yeah. and those there are different mm-hmm. countries with different types of. Like textile heritage is, right. you know, right. and right. I think that's really interesting. Um, well, thank you for listening to the podcast. And if you like what you're hearing or if you think we're sewing snobs, 
you go on iTunes yeah. and you leave us a review, okay? And I love mean reviews. Yes. And <laughs> tell all your friends about these snobby ladies you listen to talking about seam finishes, okay? Good. So long. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna say. Well, let's not be busting a seam about oh, it. Oh, oh, nice, nice. No, I'm glad you said that. Uh, I'm glad you said that. Okay. But you got me off for some reason. I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't look at you when we do this. I'm sorry. We stand, sit here and look at each other. Maybe we should be back to back. Maybe we should be in separate rooms, <laughs> like when you were little, and I would say, "Get out of my face! I, I don't like you right now." <laughs> okay. Let's not bust a seam about it, everybody. So long. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.